is your first time worshiping with us, be sure to visit our visitors table and fill out the visitors card. We'd love to get to know you and connect with you. And if you're watching online and this is your first time viewing our service, go ahead and put a one emoji in the chat. We have a community of victorious viewers. They're ready to greet you and show you some virtual love. Also, if you're in the sanctuary, our nursery is open in the east wing of the dome in classroom one for children ages one through four. If your child is younger than 12 months, the nursery is open for them as well, but a parent or guardian must be present. So if you're not familiar with our church, you're probably wondering what we at Fellowship Bible Baptist Church are all about. Here at Fellowship, our mission statement is simple. A great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission makes for a great church. So Brianna, what is the great commandment? The great commandment can be found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, which instructs us to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. And here at Fellowship, we're all about love. We may be a really big church, but we have a small church feel because we believe love is an action word. And the great commission can be found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, which instructs us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here at the ship, we are very serious about saving souls. We have several different ministries here that are solely purposed to bring new souls to Christ. And we're also serious about making disciples, teaching those who are saved about Jesus Christ through the Word of God. In fact, every Sunday at 8.15 a.m., we will have a variety of Christian enrichment classes. We have classes on the anxiety, prayer and listening, and the images of the Spirit, just to name a few, all purpose to bring us closer to God through the Bible. And every Wednesday at 6.30, Pastor Tolan Morgan takes his time and breaks down the Word of God in Bible study. Currently, we're in a series entitled Christianity 101. We are very intentional here at Fellowship to make sure everyone understands how to live a fulfilled life through the Word of God. And beginning this Wednesday, March 6th, Bible study won't just be for adults. Our Lit Nation Youth Ministry will begin a gathering entitled Lit Sessions on the first and third Wednesdays of every month during Bible study. This is an opportunity for youth age 4 through 24 and their respective age groups to learn how to get through life using the Word of God as a compass. We're also very intentional by reaching outside the four walls of our church on a regular basis. That's why every Monday from 4.30 to 5.30, we serve the Houston County community by giving away free food. That's right. Our food bank ministry is stationed every Monday outside of the FBBC gym, ready to serve Houston County. All you need is your ID and proof of Houston County residency. All right, Bree. It's about that time. Are you ready to begin worship? I'm so ready to begin worship, and I hope you are too. Worship will begin shortly.
opening prayer, please? Hasn't God been good? Hasn't God met your needs? Hasn't God been there over and over and over again? Doesn't he forgive us of our sins? If you bow your heads for prayer, please. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray today, we pray in Jesus' name. We pray your spirit come into this service. We pray you be with the pastor. We pray that you be with everyone on the pulpit, every usher, every deacon, every minister, every one of us, Lord. May you meet our needs. May you continue to comfort us. May you continue to go ahead of us and work things out. You are a fixer-upper. You are our God and our King, our Deliverer. We praise you today. We pray that you'll be in this service and we pray that we are worthy to worship you because you are worthy. You are our God. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Amen, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, fellowship. Go ahead and leave your seat and go and greet at least three of your fellow shipmates at this time. Come on, leave your seat. Come on, put your hands together. Hey! Woo! Yeah! Oh, I see your fellowship. Come on.
Georgia, Saturday, May 4th. I have been Get ready for a great night of praise and worship starring Bishop William Murphy. To Kaylin Carr. Kalante Gavin. With special invited guests, Katina, Songbird, Cabinus, and more. Saturday, May 4th at Fellowship Bible Baptist Church in Warner Robins, Georgia. It's a great night of praise and worship. Bishop William Murphy, Jacqueline Carr, Kalante Gavin, and more. Hosted by Harold Young. Doors open at 5 p.m. Showtime's at 6 p.m. Get your tickets now at mgnop.eventbrite.com or at Habersham's, Jackals, or Tees Boutique and Things. Hello Fellowship, I'm Cheryl Johnson and I'm here with your ministry highlights. We are officially in the month of March, which means daylight savings time is coming up. So on next weekend, don't forget to spring forward and set your clocks ahead one hour. Ladies, it is the beginning of the month and you know what that means. It's time to set your alarms and prepare to begin your morning in prayer. On tomorrow, March 4th at 7 a.m., join the Women of Worth Ministry for our monthly prayer call. The phone number and access code are on your screen now. So ladies, be sure to take a screenshot or a picture of this flyer. Share it with a friend or a fellow sister and join us tomorrow at 7 a.m. as we go to God in prayer. Our athletic ministry will host its annual 8th grade middle school all-star challenge on this Thursday, March 7th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Admission is $5 for everyone aged 5 and up. Food will also be available for purchase, courtesy of Tasting at the Duro. For more information, email athletics at fbbchome.org. The men in black will travel to the State Farm Arena in Atlanta to see the Atlanta Hawks play the Milwaukee Bucks on March 30th. The cost to attend this event is $100. This will cover round trip transportation from the church and back. It'll cover entrance into the game as well as the special VIP experience. Registration is open to the first 50 men. To register, visit the events tab of fbbchome.org and click on the flyer that's on your screen now. For more information, email mib at fbbchome.org. Our Trailblazers, a ministry for men and women aged 60 and up, will travel to Savannah, Georgia on June 10th to take part in Savannah's infamous gospel dinner cruise. The cost to attend is $130 per person, which will cover round trip transportation, shopping along River Street, and of course, live gospel entertainment and dinner on the Georgia Queen. To register, click on the events tab of fbbchome.org and click on the flyer that's on your screen now. For more information, you can email trailblazers at fbbchome.org. Our Women of Worth Ministry will host a singles-only social on March 16th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the FBBC gym. This is an opportunity for single men and women aged 25 and up to meet up, socialize, dance a little, and just have a good time. The cost to attend is only $20. You can register by clicking on the events tab of fbbchome.org and clicking on the flyer that you see on your screen now. For more information, email women at fbbchome.org. Well, family, that is all that we have for this week. But for more information on these and other events, visit our website at fbbchome.org or follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms so that you can always know what's happening here at the ship. Or if you would like to have information sent directly to your phone, you can text the keyword CONNECT to 478-249-5426. Until next time. Have a great week and enjoy today's worship experience. All right. Good morning, fellowship. Good morning. 
How are God's beautiful people doing this morning? All right, y'all could do better than that. Come on, good morning. Yes, yes. God be praised. Amen. He is worthy. So good morning to everyone. I just wanted to briefly come up this morning, as you all know, or if you don't know, that March is celebrated Women's History Month. Women's History Month. And so the Women of Worth Ministry would like to take time to celebrate four FBBC women this month. And our first Women of Worth woman in history is Therese Martin. Are you here, Therese Martin? If you're here, she's, I don't think she's here. She did, she is here. Therese Martin over here, ladies and gentlemen. She did not know this is a complete surprise to her. So give me just a second. Just stay standing up, Therese, so everybody can see who you are, okay? We want to celebrate our women. Therese Brantley Martin is a native of Wrightsville, Georgia, where she graduated from Johnson's County High School in 1995. Three years later, she earned a bachelor's degree in business management from Georgia College and State University, but felt she had a calling to teach. She followed her calling, returned to college, and became a teacher in 2001. She has always considered herself as a lifelong learner and earned a master's degree in 2004, specialist degree in 2005, and get it, ladies, doctoral degree in 2009. That's right. We got some educated women up in here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wait a minute, I'm not done yet. Thank y'all. Okay, by the age of 31 years old, at 31, Dr. Martin had climbed the ranks to become a principal in the Bibb County School System, which is a position that she held for eight years. In 2018, she was promoted to the Director of Student Achievement for the Crawford County School District, where she oversaw all aspects of curriculum and instruction, federal programs and professional learning programs for five years. During her tenure, she presented at several conferences across the state of Georgia and recently presented at the National ESEA Conference. In 2022, she graduated from AASA Superintendent's Academy for Female Leaders. That's right. Dr. Martin retired from public education and in December 2023 with 27 years of service and now works for the Georgia Department of Education where she serves as one of five program managers across the state of Georgia and in the Office of School and District Improvement. Therese has been married to FBBC's Chief of Staff, Derek Martin, for 24 years. And they have a daughter, Brianna, who teaches special education at Crawford County Primary Schools. So she's following in mama's footsteps. Um, they have been faithful members of FBBC for 23 years. Hey. Throughout this time, she has been actively involved in several ministries at Fellowship, including teaching Sunday school for the children's ministry, serving on the evangelism ministry, serving on the motherboard ministry, as well as being a member of the Women of Worth core team. Therese is a passionate and dedicated woman, and we salute her today as FBBC's Wild Women in History. Let's stand to our feet and let's celebrate Therese Martin. That's Dr. Therese Martin. We love you, Therese, and I'm so happy and proud to be working alongside you with the Women of Worth Ministry. We love you, Fellowship. Don't we love her?
Amen. We praise God for this, this moment to recognize Miss Martin, Dr. Martin. This song says, When I Think of the Good of Jesus. The song we know most commonly in all he's done for me. My soul does what? Cry hallelujah. Amen.
think, I need you to think about it. When I think of his goodness, I'm going to look at you. When I think of your goodness, when I think of your goodness, I'm going to look at you. the rush the moment let's think of the goodness of Jesus some of us somebody didn't wake up this morning but when I think and I got breath in my lungs the activities of my limbs when I think I'm thinking I want you to think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you your soul should cry out hallelujah hallelujah when I think of your When I think, oh, when I think of your goodness, for every mountain you brought me over, for every trial he seen me through. For every blessing, sing with me. Hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. We need to practice this. Come on, for every mountain. For every mountain, you brought me over. You brought me over. For every trial. For
Come on and think about it, church. Lift your hands and give him praise. What's your response when you think about the goodness of Jesus? What's your response when you consider the goodness of Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 Bless his name. Bless his name. Every blessing. seen anybody through anything
whatever your this is, this is your time to think about it. Come on, praise him like you're thankful. Come on, praise him like you're thankful. I said praise him like you're thankful. I said give him glory like you're thankful. I said praise him like you're thankful. Do I have any grateful people in the room? I dare about 50 of y'all, I'll make number 51 that'll praise him. Watch me for your next blessing. Give him glory for whatever's on the way. Come on, praise him for your next blessing. I said give him glory for your next blessing. This is a faith praise. Touch somebody and tell them whatever's on the way, it's going to be good. Tell them. Yes, Lord. That neighbor didn't get happy. Tell them whatever's coming next is going to be good. It's going to be good. Now, I dare about 50 of y'all to praise him for what's on the way. Not for what he's done, but for what you haven't seen yet. Tell somebody, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that God got for you. Somebody praise him for the stuff you haven't seen yet. I don't know about you, but I got some good stuff on the way. I got some good stuff on the way, and I'm giving him glory. Woo! Glory to God. You got another 30 seconds just to praise him. Because what's coming is better. Encourage three people around you and tell them, neighbor, what's coming is better than what's been. Better is on the way. It's coming. It's coming. Hey, hey, hey. Tell somebody, excuse me, I see something coming my way. Yeah. If you gotta practice, I dare about 10 of y'all to just start walking, just to practice what you're getting ready to walk into. I'm getting ready to walk into my next blessing, walk into my next healing, walk into my next miracle. Cause what's better?
sir, yes sir. Glory to God, glory. It feel right good in here. It feel right good in here. somebody by the hand and tell them neighbor you got to be blessed cuz I'm blessed and you sit next to me so you got to be blessed cuz my cup run it over my cup run it over Tell somebody, tell a neighbor, you gotta be blessed. Cause my cup run is over. Now let everything. I said, let everything. I said, let everything. That's got breath. Give him glory. <laughs> like you got the victory. Yeah. in here. I feel freedom in here. I see you giving him praise, sister. Tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, give me room. I got to give him glory. Because you don't know what I've been through this week. That deserves a thank you, Jesus. You don't know what I've been through today. That deserves a thank you, Jesus. Feel good, that feel good. Hallelujah. Has he made a way for anybody in here? Glory to God, glory to God. Hey!
giving him glory in the balcony. We just have in church, don't pay us no mind. We got to go on, but just one more time, look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, I come too far to not to praise him. He brought me through too much not to praise him. He healed my body too many times not to praise him. And when I think, he done paid my bills too many times. For me not to give him glory. It's a run in here, I feel it. You need space, you need freedom to give him glory. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now exercise your right and give it glory. I told you there's a run in here. I love it. I love it. Now tell somebody, neighbor, I feel better now. Tell them I feel better now. The joy of the Lord just attacked me. Excuse me, I had a joy attack, you know. Because this joy I have, the world didn't give it. Woo. And the world can't take it away. I need you to grab that instrument that's in your belly and open your mouth and shout thank you Jesus. For every mountain you brought me over. 
for every valley you see me through and for every blessing we only got one response Brent hallelujah and for this we give him praise I want to give you about 20 seconds with no music, no clapping hands. Just open your mouth and put the fruit of worship on your lips. Come on, open your mouth. Everybody in here, open your mouth and put the fruit of worship on your lips. Come on, come on, come on. He inhabits the praises of his people. Open your mouth, open your mouth, everybody. My, 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 my God. Woo. We offer you the fruit of our lips, God. Spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. Hey, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How great is our God and greatly to be praised. How wonderful is our God and wonderful is his name. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures unto all generations. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty for you are the temple of the Holy Ghost do you not know that his spirit abides in you? That his glory rests with you. You are made in the image of God. And in his likeness. Come on, clap your hands for the presence of God. Come on, clap your hands for the presence of God. 
I just want to be in his presence, church. And I want to be in a place that welcomes the liberal move of God. How good the Lord is to us. Everyone stand and help me thank God for our music ministry that has led us in worship today. I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number nine. Acts chapter nine. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of scripture beginning with verse number 32. Acts chapter 9, verse number 32. Your Bible should read, and it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ makes you whole. Arise and make your bed. And he arose immediately. And all that dwelt in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. I want to snatch our subject out of verse number 34 and tag this text, Make Your Bed. You may be seated in the Lord's church. <clears throat> the most celebrated matter or the most commonly celebrated matter that we glean from the acts of the apostles was the outpouring of the Holy Ghost the day of Pentecost that day where the spirit of God was poured out upon humanity to give birth to the church it was also that day historically that the saints of God, a.k.a. the church, would be empowered to share and spread the gospel internationally. <clears throat> Thus, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose, the historically correct purpose for the gift of tongues the gift of tongues was given as language necessary to make the gospel international and to spread the gospel around the globe. We see this thesis laid out in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 in which he says, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you not to shout but to be my witnesses in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the world the real power of the Holy Spirit was given to make the gospel global as a matter of fact when we read the Bible after Pentecost, Pentecost never became the message. The message was always about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to restore and reconcile humanity back to God and that we would live lives that are pleasing in his sight through the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. 
there is another matter here that is often overlooked when we read the book of Acts. What we discover, church, is that the book of Acts was an addendum to the Gospels to give historical proof and evidence that the apostles not only actually walked with Jesus but operated in his authority and power after his ascension to spread his message across the world. Very clearly, ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you that even in the book of Acts, while the Holy Ghost gets much attention, the truth of the matter is, is that when we read the book of Acts, Jesus is still in charge. Such is the discipline discovered in the discourse of Acts chapter 9 in which we find here a critical, pivotal moment in the progress of the gospel. Because what you and I just read is that the apostle Peter was now uh, felt comfortable to engage in international ministry here in Acts chapter 9. His ministry was important given that he was the first official bishop in the Lord's church. Given that most of his ministry centered at Jerusalem, now we find him in mobility, traveling throughout the province of Judea, because verse 31 of Acts 9 says that the church had a season or a stretch of rest. One of the things that is a common denominator in the book of Acts is not only church growth, but church persecution. In the book of Acts, people were killed for being a Christian. They were persecuted for being a Christian. And verse 31 of Acts 9 says that there had been a decrease or a decline in the intensity of the persecution so that Peter could now go throughout all of the quarters and check up on the churches that had been established as a result of the people scattering out of Jerusalem into safer places to avoid the persecution that was happening in Jerusalem. He goes throughout all of the quarters and finds himself in a place called Lydda. The Old Testament calls this city Lod, L-O-D. Some pronounce it Lud. It is 25 miles northwest of Jerusalem. Peter traveled there and the text says he found himself among the saints at Lydda. And there among the saints at Lydda, he found a man by the name of Aeneas. Aeneas Church is interesting because his name gives way to the revelation of why he's in the Bible. This is interesting, y'all. Because Aeneas is a Greek name, but he lives in a Jewish town. He only lives 25 miles away from Jerusalem and there he finds this man who kept his bed for eight years and was sick of the palsy. We have a brief bio on Aeneas. His name says he was Grecian living in a Jewish town, but there's more to it than that because the text says he kept his bed for eight years. That word bed in the text is the Greek word krabatos. It is a low quality mat that is only associated church with poor people. So the first thing we know is that he is sick of palsy. He is paralyzed, but he's also poor. But the third thing we learn about him is that he is passive. Because the text says, watch me, church, he's paralyzed 
among the saints. He is in a spiritual environment but is unresponsive to spiritual stimuli. He found him among the saints, much like many of you in here today who have been in this spiritual environment and haven't moved yet. He is passive. He is paralyzed. He is poor. And that gives us some insight into his socioeconomic status. But Peter took attention to him. And his name reveals why. Because church in the record of biblical history. Aeneas is the first person. That we have on record. Who experienced the power of God. That was non-Jewish by name. We have the Ethiopian in chapter 8, but we never knew his name. Aeneas is the first person that we have by name who experienced the power of God who was non-Jewish. Thus, Aeneas gives first evidence to the last line of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that says that we are to take the witness of Jesus Christ into the uttermost parts of the world. And as a result, he is now paralyzed, poor, but he has also gained some popularity because Peter says, this is the first guy who's going to experience the power of God that we know by name. But this is interesting, church, because Luke describes him in a way that is unusual. You got a Bible? Look at what the Bible says. Luke says the man kept his bed for eight years and was sick of the palsy. Catch that church. Luke says, I'm not describing him in terms of cause and effect. I'm describing him in terms of effect and cause. It doesn't say he was sick of the palsy and kept his bed. It says he kept his bed for eight years and was sick of the palsy. He describes him in terms of cause and of, of effect and cause, but there's even an intriguing piece here, uh, Ben, because when we read this, Luke the physician says that being kept in the bed was a conjunction of his condition and not a consequence. Okay, you read too fast. Let me tell you what the Bible. Here's what it doesn't say. It does not say he kept his bed for eight years because he was sick of the palsy. It says he kept his bed for eight years and was sick of the palsy. Luke wants to suggest, church, that he labeled it this way because it's possible, y'all, that Aeneas allowed one area of his life that was paralyzed to paralyze all the rest of his life. The language of the text suggests that the bed was a choice and not a consequence. He paints this picture that just because you've been paralyzed, you chose to be in the bed. Uh, may, may, maybe Luke wants to suggest to us because he is a physician uh, not all paralysis paralyzes the whole body there are some forms of paralysis that does not take the whole body down so Luke suggests that his real problem is that the effects are worse than the cause and he took one area of his life that was paralyzed and shut his whole life down. Who am I preaching to in here? You have paralyzed your whole life over one issue. 
You won't get up and go out over one issue. You won't, you won't enjoy life over one issue. You won't even come to church. Look, look, look how bad this is. He has allowed one area of his life that was paralyzed to cause him to be unresponsive even in a spiritual environment. Look at that, y'all. Worship didn't make him get up. Praise didn't make him get up. The glory of God didn't make him get up. Encouragement from his fellow saints didn't make him get up. Because y'all want to know the truth of the matter? Nothing works right on the outside. If you're broken on the inside. And that's why some of y'all ain't moved yet because there is something on the inside of you that needs to be fixed so you can respond to the outside. What, what has you unresponsive? Go on a date and can't enjoy it. sitting in a church full of people in the midst of praise and glory and look like you've been sucking on lemons for the last 15 hours. Got a whole bunch of money in the bank and still unhappy. Live in a nice house and still don't have any peace. Because you're finding out the hard way that stuff on the outside can't fix stuff that's broken on the inside. You got to deal with what's really wrong with you on the inside. Since y'all missed it, Aeneas Church is paralyzed between disability and depression. The palsy is out of his control, but the bed may be his choice. I can't get no help. That's God's word for somebody. Stop letting what you can't control control what you can control. Preach, Tolan Morgan. I said stop letting what you can't control control what you can control I know you in a bad way but get your tail up out the bed make up your hair put some makeup on brush your teeth go to the barber and look like you got some sense It might not change today, but at least you ain't got to wear everything that's wrong with you. Do I got anybody that's got some self-esteem and some pride? My life is not per perfect, but when I walk in the room, I don't always wear my problem. Tap somebody and tell them, get some dignity about yourself. Your whole world doesn't have to end just because one area of your life is paralyzed. You don't have to stay in the house just because one area of your life is paralyzed. Get up and get to it. As a matter of fact, that's how we know if you really say because real saved people don't fold under one problem. Real saved people say, I will bless the Lord. Not sometimes, but all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. If I'm broke, I'm still going to give him glory. Maybe. Luke puts the bed first because he's not taking accountability for the bed. He's taking accountability for the palsy. 
and suggest that this man's real problem is his choice to paralyze his whole life because one area of his life is paralyzed. Y'all missed it, so let me see if I can help you. I'm coming down your row in a minute because y'all ain't talking back to me right long here. There, right in that section. Uh, let me show you what paralysis looks like. Paralysis church is the unfortunate tragedy of being dead while you alive. Preach Joel and Morgan. It is the picture if Aeneas was among the saints then Spud Aeneas was the dead among the living. The greatest tragedy of life is to be dead while you're still alive. Your eyes are open, you're breathing, but you're not moving. It is the tragedy of being alive and stuck in one position. And sometimes your stuck is self-imposed. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but y'all got to be aware of negative narcissism. See, narcissistic people aren't just people who think the world revolves around them. But when the world doesn't revolve around them, they go into these pessimistic uh, uh, pout moods to get people to draw attention to them. So they use negativity to make themselves the center of attention when they can't get it through what God gave it to them. Let me give it to you another way. Negative narcissism is people who use negativity to make themselves the center of attention. How you doing? You know, I ain't doing too well today. Meet them next week. Hey, how you doing? Well, you know, my back hurting today. Always complaining. Always griping. Something's always wrong with the world and people. And they're the only ones right and the rest of us are all wrong. And if they don't do it, it's never going to be right because everybody gets it wrong and they're the only ones that get it right. And when they don't get a plaque, they pout. Negative narcissism. Aeneas is among the saints unresponsive to spiritual stimuli I'm scared of anybody who can be in this environment week after week by the way and don't move I'm almost to have security to watch you Because sometimes when you in this environment and don't move week after week, it's possible you're here for the wrong reason. I can't get no help here. In this environment where the glory of God rests, there ought to be everybody in here at least opening your mouth, lifting your hands, telling God thank you, at least nod your head so we don't think you're at your own funeral. And don't tell me it don't take all that. Because if we lock you in a room with who you got erotic vibes with, all that energy will come out and go the wrong way.
Don't play me, I'm not that guy. If you got that kind of energy for somebody who did not save you, who did not wash you in the blood, who did not keep you last night, who did not pay your bills, who did not keep you in your right mind, surely you can have it for God. Aeneas is unresponsive in a spiritual environment. And here's where the text turns. Peter found him and says, Jesus Christ makes you whole. First thing this text is tailored to teach us is about the pattern of Jesus. Let the church say the pattern of Jesus. Peter, in this text, remembered when he encountered a man who needed help and his own name didn't work. In Matthew chapter 17, they brought a little boy to, to Peter and the disciples that was demonic. And they couldn't get the boy, the demon, out of the boy. And G Peter comes to Jesus and said, Master, uh, they, this father brought this boy to us and we couldn't get the demon out. He says to him, son, this only comes out through prayer and fasting. Y'all missed it. When Jesus told Peter it only comes out through prayer, he's telling Peter the reason why it didn't work is because you didn't call on me. Lord have mercy today. I don't know what name Peter used, but it wasn't Jesus' name. Now, Peter remembers there were times he used some other name and it didn't work. But he also remembered those times. In Matthew chapter 9 and Mark chapter 2, they brought a man that was full of palsy. They couldn't get him in the house. They tore the roof off, let the man down in the house, and Jesus healed the man in his name and Peter remembered if I'm going to get this right I got to use the right name church here's, here's the point of the text the pattern of Jesus is still set even after Jesus left alright y'all ready the pattern of Jesus is still set even after Jesus left left because your effectiveness is connected to your examples you can only be as effective as the examples you submit to okay Jesus did not call Peter and send him out Jesus called Peter and brought him in and put him in the University of Christology for three and a half years to set a pattern before him so that when I leave, you follow my pattern. Lord, have mercy today. The Gospels, y'all, was Jesus setting a pattern for the disciples to follow after he left. So when Peter encountered this man who had palsy, Jesus had already set a pattern of how he needs to handle it. Call my name. You missed all that. Ladies and gentlemen, your most effective teachers are your models and your mistakes. No, I can't get no help here. If your models don't teach you, your mistakes will. Do I have any help in here? And the goal of following your models is to minimize your mistakes. Peter's clear. I've seen this before and the only name I know to use is the name that my master set before me. And I like this church. Y'all ready? Look at how Peter framed the statement. He says, Jesus maketh you whole. Uh, in old English, ETH is our equivalent of present tense progressive. 
So in the translation of the text, it actually says Jesus is making you whole. Or Jesus makes you whole. You don't know how to get happy. Peter spoke of Jesus in the present tense as though he was active and present and authoritative. But Peter saw Jesus leave in Acts chapter 1. Y'all so slow in here. Peter saw him go up into heaven in Acts chapter 1. But in Acts chapter 9, he speaks about Jesus as though Jesus is present and active. What he's saying, y'all, as, as even though he's gone, he's still in charge. Peter wants to suggest to us, church, that Jesus is still active even when Jesus is absent. Oh, have mercy. Oh, that's good news for somebody. Because that means even if he's not here, the power of his name is present. And if it's not in his physical body, the power of his name still works. And even if he's not present, his power is still available to us. Only thing happened, Roy, is that he moved upstairs and is still running things downstairs. Okay. Uh, uh, Y'all still ain't feeling me, so. Um, there's a man upstairs who is our media director. Uh, he's got his own office upstairs. But everything y'all see on these screens, he is pulling the shots from upstairs, even though you can't see him. Okay, still ain't feeling me. And to help run things down here, he got a team of people running around the room who he's talking in their ear, telling them what shot to go to. Because even though he's upstairs, he's got some team members down here who he's speaking to in their ears to make sure you still have the experience you got. Now you can't see him, but he still got power down here that even though he's up there he got people he done got on his team down here who are running things down here ladies and gentlemen does that sound like somebody you know in Acts chapter 1 he moved upstairs but he still got some ambassadors down here who he's speaking in their ears so that your earthly experience can be better and when you realize who is running things down here you look unto the hills from which comes your your help all of your help comes from the Lord because even though he's gone he's running things from upstairs isn't that good news church this is the pattern of Jesus that he is still active in the earth even though he's sitting high on the throne that's the pattern of Jesus, that Peter is following the pattern that Jesus set. Let me pause here and tell you, church. Uh, the Bible is clear that everybody who was effective in ministry had a model. Nobody effective in ministry is a rebel. Because rebels are reckless. Rebels are gifted with no guidance. And therefore they're more dangerous because they are gifted and have no guidance. Joshua was effective because he submitted to Moses. Ruth was effective because she submitted to Naomi. The disciples were effective because they submitted to Jesus. And the pattern goes on and on and on. If you are going to be effective in the world, you need a model. I knew you weren't going to say nothing because you thank you all that. Until you have one moment where you messed up, then you want to hide your messed up because you want everybody to think you all that. The truth of the matter is, if you're going to be great for God, you got to have a model. Peter follows the pattern of Jesus. 
But he also lays out the power of Jesus. He says, Jesus is making you whole. And when we see that power, y'all, he says, now arise and make your bed. Y'all ready? Look at these instructions. Arise. That means stand up. Because standing is the position of victory. Anybody who wins anything is seen standing. Lord have mercy. To me. I said anybody who wins anything is seen standing. Losers are down on the ground. But people who are seen standing are in the posture of victory. But he not only says stand, he says make up your bed. Come here, come here. Uh, that's a sign of strength. That you don't need anybody else to move your stuff out the way. You're getting up out of this bed as a sign of strength. But it's also a sign, y'all, of a shift in your stability. Because if you get out of this bed, I told you at the opening of this sermon that this bed is a sign of poverty. Lord have mercy today. And when I get you up out of this, I'm shifting you from poverty to prosperity. I'm shifting you from not having enough to having more than enough. But you can never do it as long as you stay in that bed. Okay, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm only talking to a few, few people who know uh, what this is about. He told this Aeneas to make his bed. Get up out of it. Because Jesus Christ is making you whole. It's a bigger shift there, y'all. Uh, it's actually seen in the modern day society. Uh, anybody who's been to prison knows when you go to prison, one of the first thing they give you is a thin little bed. And you got to hold on to that bed if they switch you from cell to cell. I know y'all ain't been in jail. I ain't either. I just know some people who have. Y'all missed it. If you got to hold your own bed, it's a sign you in prison. But here's the shout, y'all. If you get released or bonded out on the way out, you got to turn in your bed. Because part of the release process is giving up your bed because you're getting ready to come out of prison. Lord, have mercy today. Peter says to Aeneas, I'm pulling you out of prison because I'm separating you from the thing that defines you being stuck because it's time to come out of prison. Here's the freedom, y'all. Y'all ready? Aeneas never requested to be healed. He never prayed to be healed. He never fasted to be healed. He never expressed faith to be healed. He got healed because Peter found him. I'm going to shout myself because y'all don't know how to get happy. Tell your neighbor, 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 if you missed this point, you'd have missed the sermon. This means y'all, any day now, a miracle is going to find you. Any day now, healing is going to find you. Any day now, the blessing of God is going to find you. You don't have to covet for it. You don't have to chase it. You don't have to hurt nobody else. The blessings of God will find you. Touch you people, tell them neighbor any day now. The benevolence of God is going to find you. It'll find you laying down. It'll find you in whatever state you're in. You just wait on the Lord and be of good courage. The blessings of God know exactly where you are. A 
and he's coming to get you out of prison. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody is in a prison that you are ashamed to even say. The good news is God knows where you are. And any day now, freedom is going to find you. Deliverance will find you. Healing will find you. I'm done. Thank y'all for letting me share this little Easter speech. I'm done. He says, make up your bed as a sign that I'm separating you from the thing you've been stuck in. Somebody missed that. He said, make up your bed as a sign I'm separating you from the thing you've been stuck in. Because you let one area of your life paralyze your whole life. Really, y'all, palsy was his sickness, but his mind kept him paralyzed. Lord, have mercy. And I'm going to free your mind from that bed because you think that's where you belong because you let one little area of your life keep you stuck. But I need you to get up because your miracle was never just about you. I'm done. I'm in verse 35. Here it is. It says, when they saw him, people in two different towns, saw him and turned to the Lord. Okay, you missed it. When they saw him, uh, people in two different towns turned to the Lord. Okay, Q. Uh, this, is, this is the interpretation of verse 35. They didn't turn to the Lord just because they saw him up. Because seeing him up would not have meant anything had they never seen him down. Y'all acting brand new. See, sometimes people don't need to know your after, they need to know your before. Because they can't appreciate your after if they don't never know what you used to be, what God brought you out of, what your past looked like, and you ought not to be ashamed of it. You ought to use it as a before and after picture. This is who I was before I met Jesus. But since I met Jesus, this is who I am. Get me away from church people who've been saved so long. You try to act like you have no past. The devil is a lie. And try to make everybody else feel good because they, they feel bad because they reflect your past. Sometimes people do need to know your past so that they can appreciate the change God has brought you through. It wouldn't have ever meant anything had they never known that he was down. Here's the close. I'm done. Y'all ready? Two towns of people turned to the Lord when they saw God raise up a man who was down. Two towns of people turned to the Lord when they saw God raise up a man who was down for eight years, met Jesus, and raised him up. I'm going to try this side over here. Two towns of people got saved because they saw Jesus raise up a man who had lost power. Okay. Two towns of people got saved because they saw a man be raised up by the power of Jesus. Okay, back in the, if, are, 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 they're slow, so I'm going to try to talk to y'all. Two towns of people got saved because they saw a man who was down with no power, but by the authority of Jesus, he got up. <laughs> uh, does that sound like somebody y'all know? One Friday on Calvary's Hill, there was one man who died, but three days later, God raised him up, and all of us got saved because we saw him raised up. Yeah. 
And I want to be on the team of God who can raise people up. I don't just want to be on the team of a God who sustains you when you're up. I want to be on the team of a God that can lift you when you're down. Do I have a witness in here? Thank God he's given you the power to get up. Everyone standing. Is somebody here that says, Pastor, I, uh, I'm like Aeneas. I, I've been unresponsive to my environment because I've just been feeling down. The name of Jesus Christ possesses the power to not only fix your outside, but to make you whole on the inside. You have relegated your life according to your disability. And God says, if you submit to my power in your life, I will make you whole. That word whole means to be cured. That when, when he said Jesus makes you cured, I'm not just fixing your outside. I'm fixing your inside so you can go change your outside. All you simply need to do is receive the power of that is associated with the name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking to some lifeless people in here. If you have not received Jesus Christ, you are the walking dead. But if you want life, Jesus says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you may have life and have life more abundantly all I need you to do is trust me open up your heart receive me that you might live in the fullness of the power of his name who is it here that says pastor I'm, I'm feeling lifeless but I need Jesus in my life. I want to give my heart and my mind to the Lord. I don't want this day to pass. I don't want this Sunday to pass. I don't want this moment to pass without receiving Jesus Christ. What must I do to be saved? Number one, you've got to be willing to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Number two, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that he died for you and died as you. They're already moving. Church, they're already moving. I got a whole crew of people coming up here. Number two, you've got to be willing to submit that Jesus Christ died for you and died as you. Number three, you've got to be willing to believe by faith that after being dead for three days, God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. You're willing to believe those three things in your heart and confess that out of your mouth. The Bible says you shall be saved. Who else is it here that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I was waiting on somebody to move first, but now it's my turn and my time to give my life to Jesus. Come on, in the balcony, I'm waiting on you. On the main level, I'm waiting on you. I don't believe that this is all that's here. There's somebody else here that says, Pastor, it's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Who else is it? Come on, church. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming.
Church, they're coming. Church, they're coming. I need somebody to give God. These souls are coming. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me? I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to do it today. I want to do it today. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I wish I could tell you that next Sunday was promised to you, but it's not. I wish I could tell you that you got next year, but that's not promised either. I don't know if you got tomorrow. What I do know is that you got right now. And the Bible says, in the day you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Who else is it? Come on. Fellowship, ask everybody around you, are they saved? Do they have a church home? If they say no to either one of those questions, tell them you'll walk up here with them. It's your time and turn. I don't want anybody to leave out of this place without receiving the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, this is your time. 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 Come on, church. My sister's coming. Somebody give God praise for her. Hallelujah. Who else is it that says, Pastor, it's me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, church. They still coming. They still coming. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not telling you that if you get saved, your life is going to become perfect. I'm telling you that when you get saved, he'll change you so you can go change your life. But you got to open up your heart and receive him. He's here to make you whole. He's here to save your soul. Will there be another one that will come and say, Pastor, it's me. I'm really tired of living beneath my privilege. I'm tired of living insufficient of God. I want the fullness of God. I want his glory in my life. Who else is it? Who else is it? Come on. That's all. Those of you that stand here, I want to be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ and to the love of Jesus Christ. And I also want to be the first to welcome you to the baddest church in Middle Georgia. You're the new family members and we love you in Jesus' name. May the love of Jesus Christ go with all of you. And may your experience here in the family fulfill you in your personal walk with God. Right behind you is one of our clergy. Would you go with her, Mr. Sandra? Would you go with her, Mr. Sandra Williams? Would you go with her? And as you go with her, church, let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them.
Come on, clap your hands and give Jesus praise, everybody. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Would our ushers come now? Church, it's giving time. It's giving time. Let's prepare to give unto the Lord. Come on, let's prepare to give unto the Lord. Um, we are so blessed. We are so blessed as a people, and we're blessed as a church, and we want to express our stewardship to Jesus Christ. If you would like an envelope, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you'd like an envelope, even in the balcony. If you'd like to use an envelope. If you're not using an envelope, on screen, on screen, are several other options of giving. I would that you will uh, choose one of these options. I'm going to be giving through our Shelby Next app. Anyone that would like to use an envelope, raise your hand. We want to make sure that uh, you uh, get an envelope. Amen. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that we have something to give. And that which we give, we give liberally, cheerfully, and with gratitude. Thank you for meeting every need in our lives. So take our gifts now. Be pleased with them, but not only just them, but be pleased with us as the giver. As we sow, let the harvest be in our houses. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share our tithes and offerings now. Deacons, if you'll come forward now, if you'll come forward. Again, choose one of these options that are on screen to share your tithes and offerings. If you're giving today, again, to our goal zero, um, you can be sure uh, to click on that tab on, on any of these mechanisms and uh, appropriate it accordingly. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. How many of you are thankful you got something to give? Amen. Amen, amen. Those of you that have your envelopes ready and prepared, if you'll lift them, the deacons will come and retrieve them now. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please keep your hand raised until they get to you. If we miss anyone, please raise your hand. I see a hand over here. Those of you that are online in the virtual sanctuary, if you'll share with us now, we praise God for you and for your faithfulness and your stewardship in the Lord's church. I pray God's favor over your homes, over your lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise. Come on, let's thank him. Let me ask our first-time visitors, if this is your first time worshiping here at Fellowship, would you stand? We would just want to thank you. And appreciate you for coming our first time visitors god bless you bless you look church they a little bit of everywhere bless you my detroit family in the house bless you bless you in the balcony god bless you thank you fellowship look around greet these that are standing thank you all for coming you may be seated thank you so very much is pastor jeff coat here pastor jeff coat bless you sir thank you Bless you, man. Uh, Pastor Head with you. Would you stand, sir? Come on. These, they decided uh, whose anniversary is it? Pastor Head decided to worship today the fellowship to kick off his pastoral anniversary. <laughs> Bless you, sir. Thank you all. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Amen. Amen. We're always honored uh, when pastors come 
and share because we respect their, their schedule. All of you who have a birthday in March, where my March birthdays? <laughs> where my March birthdays at? Where my March birthdays at? Come on, church, show some love to the March birthdays. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. On behalf of your church family, happy birthday to you this month. And uh, may this be a choice month of blessings uh, for you. Those of you celebrating a marriage anniversary in the month of March. Celebrating marriage. Anybody celebrating marriage? God bless you. Bless you. He had to snatch his wife up. Lord have mercy. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Happy anniversary to all of you that are celebrating marriage uh, in the month of March. And may the Lord bless you with more bliss till death parts you. Uh, you will notice, church, that we did not do communion today. The reason why is that we're preserving communion for our Monday, Thursday worship, the actual day in history where Jesus initiated and uh, inaugurated communion the Thursday before Good Friday. So we will be having worship on Monday, Thursday, and during that service, we will observe communion. So I need y'all to get your phones right now. Get your phones right now. And mark down March, 3rd, March the 28th. March the 28th. That's a Thursday night. We will have our communion service during Passion Week, uh, March the 28th at 7 p.m. March the 28th. We will be here. Uh, during Passion Week. Amen. So we will have communion that night. I'm looking forward to all of you being here as we remember our Lord's sacrifice through the sacrament of communion. Um, on March the 16th, on March the 16th, uh, we are hosting a singles social. You may have seen that in our uh, ministry highlights uh, I am particularly asking uh, humbly that our single unmarried men would decide to come uh, we've got we have a small number of unmarried gentlemen that have committed to come with about 10,000 women Now, brethren, our hearts desire and pray to God. <laughs> so, Rose, it's a fellowship that's designed for both men and women. Uh, so I'm asking uh, our men if you will um, attend, register him. Yeah? I ain't trying to get you in no trouble. Just come. It's a... It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, just, just show up. It's going to be a good fellowship, and it's a good time for all of you. So we're asking you to register for that so that we can uh, maximize that time together. Amen. Next Sunday, time changes. Time changes. Uh, we spring forward one week from today. I need y'all, whoever y'all know that control that time, tell them, call them, text them, tell them, leave it alone here. Just let it be. <laughs> Whoever y'all know. Uh, but we change time next Sunday. Uh, we spring forward. Um, we'll lose an hour of sleep. So do the best you can here. <laughs> do, the do the best you can. Do the best you can. Didn't God bless us in a wonderful way today? Amen. Let's stand. This month is Easter month. It's Resurrection Sunday on the last Sunday in this month, which will be the fifth Sunday of March, March 31st. And uh, we're starting our road to resurrection so I would ask that you would be prayerful 
uh, invite your family and friends to be a part of worship experience here this month at Fellowship as we turn our heads and eyes and our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ and as we celebrate the most important thing he's done for us. Would you look this way as we ask the Lord's blessings on you? My wife and I are going to uh, be a part of shaking your hands today. Let me ask the Lord's blessings on you. The Lord God bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he bless you in this city. May he bless you in the field. May he bless your going out and your coming in. May the favor of God grant you what money cannot buy you. May he give you the strength and the power to get up in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hug somebody and tell them you love them on your way out. Everybody enjoy your day.